Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to talk about naming acids, bases, and salts. Today's essential question, which you need to answer completely in your summary, is what are the rules for naming acids and bases? Please make sure you have your periodic tables and polyatomic handouts handy. Let's start with a quick review on naming salts. This is a review because a salt is nothing other than a neutral, meaning pH of 7, binary ionic compound. And you know how to name ionic compounds. All right, so to name a salt, the first name is always the cation, the positive one, or the metal. And you're going to use the name directly from the periodic table or the polyatomic ion chart. So no changes. The second name is going to be from the anion or the nonmetal. So if the anion is from the periodic table, you're going to drop the ending and add IDE. So for example, if we had CaCl2, we would name that cation, which is the calcium, as calcium, no changes. And then the last name is the anion or the chlorine, which we're going to change to chloride. Okay, so this is calcium chloride. If the anion is a polyatomic ion, use the polyatomic ion name and do not change the ending. So for example, if I had CaClO3, that would be calcium chlorate. ClO3 is a polyatomic ion, chlorate. So the name of this guy is calcium chlorate. So that's how you name salts, something you already know how to do. Now let's name acids. So remember that an acid is an ionic compound that has an H1 plus as the cation and then some anion connected. So the chemical formula for an acid are, um, in the general form would be HX. H1 plus is going to be the cation. And every acid starts with an H1 plus. That's how you know it's an acid. That's the definition of an acid. And then the X is some anion. And the anion can either be from the periodic table or it can be a polyatomic. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So again, the general formula is HX, H being the cation, X being the anion. And that's true of all acids. Again, that's the definition of an acid, starts with an H. All right, rules for naming acids. There are several different rules for naming acids, and the rule you're going to use is dependent on the ending of the anion. Okay. So, the name, when the name of the anion, or the X, ends in ide, and if it ends in ide, we know that means that the anion comes from the periodic table. That's what the ide means. So, when the, anion, when the name of the anion, the X, in, in, ends in ide, we're going to drop the ending, which means we're going to drop the ide, and we're going to use the prefix hydro and the suffix ic. Um, and we'll put the, the, um, the rest of the name of the anion in this little space right here. Okay, so remember that the general formula for an acid is HX. Now, what tells us that it's an acid? The H tells us it's an acid, and when you're naming an acid, the H tells you it's an acid. So that's where the, the H, the acid name comes from. The X is the rest of the name, the anion. Okay, so for an example, H3N. First of all, we know it's an acid because of the H. So... We know it's going to be, the last part of the name is going to be acid. So we've used the H. So now we need to figure out the name of the N. 
N is off the periodic table, and it is nitride. Ends in ide, right? So since it ends in ide, we're going to use hydro blank ic. So hydro nitri nit and we're going to get rid of the ide ic hydronitric acid. So HN3, H3N is hydronitric acid. So let me get rid of all this mess here. What you really need to remember here is when the name of the anion ends in ide, we're going to use hydroic acid, and in this case, hydronitric acid. Okay, rule number two. When the name of the anion or the X ends in ite, and since it's ite, not ide, I-D-E, we know this is not off the periodic table. It's a polyatomic ion. We're going to drop the ending, so this time we're going to drop the ite. There's no prefix, just the suffix us. And once again, remember that the general formula for an acid is HX. The H is the acid part of the name, and the X is the rest. Okay, so our example is HNO2. So we know that H is the acid part of the name. Now we've got to figure out what NO2 is. NO2 is a polyatomic ion, and it is nitrite. Ite. So we're going to cross out ite and put the NITR in this blank spot right here. So we're going to have nitrous acid. With the NITR coming from the original name of NO2, and the us is the suffix. And the acid comes from the H part. The third rule for naming acids um, is when the name of the anion ends in 8. And because 8 is not IDE, it's not from the periodic table, 8 is also um, an ending of a polyatomic ion. So we're once gonna, again going to drop the ending, which is the 8. We're, gonna, we're not going to use a prefix. We're going to use the suffix ic. And then the last name will be acid, which is for the H. Right? So acid is for the H part of this. And the ic is the X. All right, so an example is HNO3. We know the H is the acid part of the name. NO3 is a polyatomic, and it is nitrate. So we're going to drop the ending, 8. We're going to put the NITR in the blank space and use the suffix ic. ic. So we're going to have nitric acid. So HNO3 is nitric acid. So now you know the rules for naming acids. Remember that the, the rule that you're going to apply is dependent on the ending of the anion, whether it's ide, meaning it comes off the periodic table, whether the ending is ite, a polyatomic ion, or whether the ending is ate, also a polyatomic ion. Okay. Let's learn how to name bases. So a base is a compound that produces hydroxide when in dissolved in water. And for now, the general formula of a base is X OH1 minus, with the X being, being the cation. Okay. So ionic compounds that are bases are named in the same way as any other ionic compound. So you just name the cation, which you remember, just like 
naming a salt or any ionic compound, you just use either the exact name off the periodic table or the name off the polyatomic ion chart. And then you add the anion name, which is going to be hydroxide. So for example, CaOH2 is going to be calcium for the cation, and OH is hydroxide. So naming bases is really, really easy. All right, let's try a couple practice problems. We'll start with H3PO3. Why don't you hit pause and see if you can name this thing by yourself. Then hit play and see how you did. So we know this is an acid because it starts with an H. So let's figure out what PO3 is. PO3, the anion, is not off the periodic table because there's no such thing as PO3 on the periodic table. So this guy is a polyatomic and he is phosphite. Okay, so he ends in ite. So the name of the, the anion portion of the name is going to be phos. We're going to drop the ite and we're going to apply the rule, which is us. No prefix because it ends in ite. And then we're going to put the last name acid for the H. So H3OP is phosphorus acid. Often by convention, in, we put the or back in and we would call this phosphorus acid. Um, either way is fine. Let's try another one. How about H2CO3? Once again, hit pause, see if you can do this without help. All right, we once again know this is an acid because it starts with an H. So we need to look at the um, anion to figure out the name. And CO3 is a polyatomic, it is carbonate. So we're gonna follow the eight rules. So it's gonna be carbon, we get rid of the eight, and we're gonna put the suffix ic, carbonic, acid, and the acid comes from the H. All right, see if you can figure this out. What if I gave you an acid name like hydrobromic acid? Could you write the formula? All right, well, we know it's an acid, so it's going to start with an H, H1+. Plus. So now we need to figure out what hydrobromic is. Well, hydro is a prefix, so that's not part of that, not part of the actual formula. So hydro and the suffix ic tell us that brome comes off the periodic table, and it's bromide, which is Br. And we need to know the charge because this is, a, remember, an acid and a base and a salt are all ionic compounds. So it's going to be H1 minus. We see that it's neutral, so hydrobromic acid is HBr. How about one more? What if I gave you the name selenic acid? All right. Well, once again, acid tells us it starts with an H1+, and then we have selenic. We know it can't be off the periodic table because if, if the anion was off the periodic table, it would be hydroic. So this must be some sort of polyatomic. Well, ic is the rule, ic with no hydro, is the rule for eight. So we know that this is selenate. Well, selenate is S-O, no, sorry, S-E-O-4 with a two minus charge. So to neutralize the charges, we would need to have H2SeO4. So that is the formula, H2SeO4 is the formula for selenic acid. Okay, we'll leave it at there for now. Have a good one.